Please close your passenger door. Please close your driver door. Your engine oil pressure is critical. Engine damage may occur. Your engine temperature is above normal. Please check your engine coolant level. Please check your fuel level. Your charging system is malfunctioning. Prompt service is required. Please check your brake fluid level. Please check your disc brake pads. Your washer fluid is low. Please check your headlamps. Please check your brake lamps. Please check your tail lamps. Your parking brake is on. Your keys are in the ignition. Your headlamps are on. 1987 Chrysler LeBaron Turbo 5-speed manual. Behold, a car out of time. The screen, we may have to use uh, the, the DSLR because this shutter is seeing the oscillations of the, uh, I guess these are real LEDs, huh? Yeah, it's a VFD. What is a VFD? So a vacuum fluorescent display. So these are almost like um, little Nixie tube type uh, indicators. Um, so they, they're in a vacuum sealed glass uh, display and uh, almost like a CRT. Electrons hit a phosphor that excites the, uh, the shape of the uh, indicator and that makes it light up. What's interesting is that the ones on the dash don't oscillate while well, the ones over here do. It's very, yeah, it's very touchy. Um, like hmm. over there, your shutter might be changing, uh, but they could also be oscillating at different, uh, yeah. different rates. Hey, this episode of Regular Car Reviews is sponsored by the CDE 900. It's a scan tool, but it shows you a little bit more than just the trouble code that you have to go and then Google. This is a scan tool that shows you so much more than just a code. You can test your O2 sensors. You can get a freeze frame of everything here. You can take a screenshot of everything you've seen. You can log problem. You can see all the sensors that your ECU monitors. It charges itself from the OBD2 port. Yeah, you do get 12 volts from this. So it also tells you how much volts you're making at the same time that it charges its own battery. I'm just reading the codes here. Oh, this Saab doesn't have any codes in. Well, I see a BMW over there. Start. No, there's definitely, it should have secondary air and cat, and, uh, cat faults. Read codes. Okay, there it goes. Yeah. Oh, here we go. There's some codes. PO240, catalyst system efficiency below threshold bank one. P1423, secondary air system bank one. P300, random multiple cylinder misfire. <laughs> it, just when it's cold. <laughs> <laughs> what else we got? Uh, cylinder three misfire detected, cylinder two misfire detected. Awesome. You want me to clear your codes for you? You can if you want, it'll, it'll just be a momentary break. <laughs> but it's interesting that uh, we're, get, we're getting live data even though, the, even though the engine's off, saying absolute throttle position is zero, absolute flow rate from mass airflow sensor is zero, calculated load values, hey, you're getting live data even though the engine's off, which is interesting that BMW gives you data when the engine's off, whereas that Saab over there gives you, it doesn't even report. Mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. And if I want, I can save this sample. Blah. It's data collected function is used to collect values. Yeah, I know. This is a pretty good size cable too. I'm all I'm all the way out here by the door. Well, I got a little bit extra because your OBD is dangling. The CDE 900 is also upgradable. For $39.95, you can also diagnose your automatic braking system, traction control unit, transmission control unit, engine computer monitor, ECM, SRS. This includes live action readouts. This allows you to diagnose the problem with the CDE 900 instead of having to walk over to your phone and Google something. This isn't just a four system scanner. It scans your soul. 
everything that professional scanners do at shops, this thing does as well. Expandable upgradable options. Expandable upgradable options. Free lifetime upgrades. And it depends on your individual needs. Don't want to Google stuff? Don't want to Google stuff? Great for beginners in the repair field. Affordable entry at entry price. Affordable entry price. Once again, click on the link in the description for the CDE 900 OBD2 scan tool. Thank you so much for sponsoring this video. This is a turbocharged front wheel drive manual transmission coupe with digital gauges. A festival of sharp, beautiful green light wrapped in a body to appease older folks who, in the year of 1987, pined for the personal luxury coupes of 1973. Personal luxury coupes were redressed 1960s cars in the mid-1970s to distract consumers from the oil crisis and strangling first-stage emission systems. They had chrome grills, high and proud square lights, hideaway square lights, and acres of plush soft seating. Never mind that in the 70s, U.S. manufacturers hadn't figured out how to make emissions and performance go hand in hand. Instead, they just told consumers, well, why don't you just be comfortable? And who knew that people a decade later had grown attached to that style? So here we have the LeBaron Coupe. Look at my old AW11. This and the Turbo LeBaron are the same type of car from the same era. And look at how futuristic the Toyota was compared to this Chrysler. But underneath this Chrysler is a modern for 1987 turbocharged four-cylinder. Awesome! But wait, the turbo has a stock boost of only 7 PSI? Uh, and it's a hot air turbo? Uh. This is the first knuckle shifter I've ever driven that I like. <laughs> Every other one felt like it was at the wrong angle. This seems to be at the perfect angle. Yeah, it's surprisingly ergonomic, and I wasn't sure if the angle was going to sit right when I put it on there. Um, <laughs> there you can hear the turbo. Or it's probably just dumping right there. Yeah, the second I, got, the second I got the 10 there. Yeah, that might be that G-valve opening. Manual boost. Yeah, it handles like a boat still. <laughs> Good for doing that. Good for doing that. But then making the right hand turn that we're about to make back to the club. Don't think so. <laughs> and break, 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 break. Down to second. There's an old car up there. Okay. I can kind of feel the turbo. This chipset fan of a turbo feels like I have like a half gear between second and third that I can shift into whenever I need a little more. Would you like a little more? Here's a turbo that gets you a little more. Would you like to visit poopsex.gov? We're solving the student debt crisis at poopsex.gov. We're public servants working for the greater good at poopsex.gov. So log on and come to poopsex.gov, 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 poopsex.gov. Poopsex.gov. Poopsex. You're a grand old flag. You're a high flying flag. And forever in peace may you wave. You're the emblem of Poopsex.gov. But wait, it's a manual transmission. Yes, but it feels like the stick shift on an old Ford IDI diesel. Big gaps between gears. The engine falls out of boost in between those shifts. And that's a shame because even with the warped masculinity, bad dragon, cock ridges, her shift grip here, this five speed is precise and fun to shift. If only it wasn't so long legged. This LeBaron, if made today, this would be for a 65 year old man 
who wants to show off his iPhone 4. I'm still with it. Watch as I hold my phone at arm's reach, because that's where my eyes focus now. Uh-oh, my phone is ringing. What could that mean? Time to just stare at my phone like I've never seen a ringing phone before. It's 1987 and I'm gonna buy a car that talks to me so I can sass back to it. It's 2023, and I'm gonna get Alexa so I can sass back at her when she doesn't understand my herbal gerbil language because my jowls are getting too big. My fantasy is to get a mumble blowjob from Henry Kissinger. The LeBaron is a temporal curiosity. Typically, when people talk about something being anachronistic, it means it exists outside of its own time. It exists where and when it shouldn't. But what was the time for the LeBaron? What period is it representing? Aesthetically, it looks like it rolled right out of the period between roller discos and hair metal. Mechanically, it tries to be ahead of its contemporaries by being a car that could talk to you. In modern times, it creates a familiar sense of comfort for older drivers. The kind who like having an Alexa because it's the one woman they can yell at without being ostracized by friends and neighbors. It was a weird time. 1987 was the Iran-Contra hearings. The release of Prozac. A 74-year life expectancy in America. And the return of red M&Ms after an 11-year ban. Oh and Chrysler purchasing AMC. Yeah, they were making moves in the auto industry, just not the moves they probably thought they were making. You see, the LeBaron began life as a coach builder in the 1920s and 30s, before being purchased by Briggs Manufacturing Company, who made bodies for most of the major auto manufacturers at the time. This included Chrysler, whose Imperial line was handled by LeBaron directly. Chrysler eventually bought Briggs Manufacturing in 1953 and got LeBaron as a result, eventually crafting a model around the LeBaron name. This is a LeBaron that's aimed squarely at modernity, and yet it feels inconsistent with that time period, and bizarrely unfitting in ours as anything other than a lemons car candidate. The 2.2 liter turbo T1 engine makes 146 horsepower. Wow at 5,200 RPM and 170 pound-feet of torque at 3,600 RPM, matched to a five-speed manual transmission. And now this car has an aftermarket boost controller that bypasses the computer-controlled boost. Neil, the owner, only has the aftermarket boost controller upping the boost from 7 to 10, because if you go higher than 10 without an intercooler on this engine, it's bad times. But Chrysler was really confident in this car as evidenced by the vaguely threatening brochure. Concede its beauty. Make your demands. Succumb to its contemporary styling and prestige as you maintain control of its spirited performance. And I'm gay. This is a public service announcement. I am gay, so I'm allowed to make those jokes. It maintains an inflated sense of its own worth and its place in the limited scope of American futurism. You get a trip computer, but only vacuum fluorescent displays with buttons backlit by pilot lamps. Of course, this actually ended up being a cool thing. In our review of the C4 Corvette, we talked about how the LCD displays were threatened by temperature changes. But VFD displays didn't really have that problem because of the wider range of temperature they could withstand. And you did get digital gauge clusters that could display the speed and odometer readings in Imperial or Metric, along with a trip computer, settings to check oil pressure, water temperature, and fuel economy. It's modern in a way not a lot of American cars were then. And its biggest competitor was the Ford Thunderbird Turbo Coupe. And it is a unique car with weird and sometimes pointless but definitely amusing features. 
like the valet lockout feature that keeps your trunk safe from Tommy Fenstermacher or whichever 22-year-old is parking cars at Le Bistro Merdique. You get voice alerts that can mute the radio so you don't miss it. I mean, yeah, it starts to sound like nightmare fuel when it drops below a certain voltage. Your keys are in the ignition. But this 11-function voice alert is actually better in some ways than the 24-function options because it'll talk to you whether there's actually a problem or not, whereas the 12 just shouts at you if something's wrong. So this will remind you not to forget your keys, which helps in the grand cosmic effort to prevent forgetfulness. But feel free to go to the comments and brag if you have never, ever locked your keys in the car. You probably earned it by now. Just how karma is going to be on that ass like fruit of the loom. This is the third gen model for the LeBaron and it shares more with the Dodge Daytona than the Dodge Shadow, at least with regards to its chassis design. It follows from Iacocca's idea of using fewer distinct platforms and increasing the amount of shared parts and elements between models. Chrysler hasn't released a convertible since 1970, so when Iacocca planned to revive the old LeBaron nameplate, he brought it in the firm Cars and Concepts to adapt this coupe body style to a convertible. It was a success. So much so that the coupes from this year are actually less common than the convertibles. This was the first year for the new J body. I say new because this isn't the same J body as the coupe platform used on the Cordoba and the Imperial at the start of the decade. This is a variation on the old front wheel drive K platform. It's progress by way of regression, going back to what worked in the past and adapting it for modern times. In 1987, the LeBaron cost $12,459 which comes out to about, in 2023, $32,944. It's not a bank breaker, and a lot of buttons in here are cheap. There's the bones of something very good in this structure, but having a car that's passable for 1987 is just about as meaningless as being good at bingo. But the point of this car was to sell and sell quick. Iacocca is trying to get Chrysler back on its feet. So anything with a turbo, talking cars, VFD displays, combination of the of this wood grain to appease old people, and we'll put silver stuff on the Dodge Daytona. Let's just throw everything out there, but have it based on very minimalistic platforms. And it did sell. People like them. Granted, they like the convertibles better. Anyway, I'm not sure if this car was necessarily worth the asking price, because what you're paying for isn't the car you're paying for the novelty of having a talking car. Chrysler LeBaron, the official car of living beyond your means. Chrysler LeBaron, sponsored by embossed leather wallets that hold $14 and a punch card for Jersey Mike's. Chrysler LeBaron, future tech by the way of the past. It's like wired headphones plugged into a vibrator so you can hear yourself coming. In Neil's experience, this thing gets about 26 to 27 miles per gallon and as high as 30 miles per gallon on the highway, which is decent for a car this old and worn. He paid $1,600 for this car, but the low price point was offset by all the work Neil had to do to get it up to snuff. Rear brake lines, boost gauge, and the aforementioned manual boost controller, all along with replacing the passenger side mid-shaft with one long CV axle. Yet there's a kind of piece to taking something from nothing and making it your own. So that even if it's not necessarily restored to the best representation of its former glory, you don't have the attitude of a person who sells his car to make a lateral move to something that's just as bad out of the idea that, well, anything's better than what I have now. Because in the car world, true contentment is elusive. There will always be something wrong with anything you get. And while you shouldn't settle, there's virtue in accepting something for what it is. Some people can never be happy with their choices because the right choice is always the one they didn't make. So it says a lot that Neil could take something like a Chrysler LeBaron Turbo, a car from a year where it didn't even have airbags, and remain confident in the choice he made, even with all the headaches.